you're you're very Skype ready. I am Skype ready. <laughs> I do this How a lot, you? so it's not a big deal. So you're in Argentina. We're in Argentina. Cool. Um, it's uh, nine in the night. Oh, that's not too bad. You're only four hours, four hours ahead of me. No, not not that much. It's not like it's not like we're in Florida. No. Um, Actually, it's similar. Uh, Florida's three hours ahead of me. It's. Oh, I thought it was five. No, no, no. So I'm on the West Coast. So there's four time zones in the U.S. Right. So Florida, it's eight o'clock, and you're at nine o'clock. So. Right. No, we're all right. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, thank you so much, so 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 much for being oh, a part of. Um, happy to do it. We're doing um, a short documentary. Mm -hmm. It's for school. Uh, we're in fourth year of um, visual communications. It's called. Cool. Um, our documentary borders two things. It's of course about um, the flat Earth theory. Yeah. But it's also about using the flat Earth theory as an axis to um, to highlight the, the, the incredibly low uh, amount of questioning and doubts that a lot of uh, people put in their lives, like waking up with so many certainties and forgetting to uh, ask questions sure. themselves instead of... Um, so, um, for you to have an idea so that you don't... So that... I oh, you can you can ask seriously. By by now, I've probably been asked everything you can think of, so you don't have to prep anything. <laughs> it's all right. No, you know, I'm not I'm not prepping you for things, but it's it's just um, just giving you a little context of what it's about. So oh, okay. So I don't have you four hours on Skype. That's all. All right. Um, so uh, we'll have like two three questions about flat Earth, and then I'll ask you about um, well, your personal opinions about. Uh, what I just told you, like sure. Sure. man and society being trapped in routines that don't allow them to ask questions. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, um, first one, and we'll do, we'll do all of this ones like kind of short. Um, and this is the one you've probably been asked a billion times now. Okay. Okay. So I'm not a flat earther. Um, and my first question is how would you quickly introduce me to the flat earth theory and how would you make me believe or at least question my okay. my opinions the flat earth members and i call them flat earth 2.0 or flat earth university whatever you want to call it it's all based in social media it's all digital believes that first and foremost we are not this tiny little rock that's flying through space in five different directions and five different velocities and that we're living in this impossible empty universe where we mean absolutely nothing. Mm -hmm. Instead, they believe that we live in a flat, stationary, circular domed structure, uh, basically a building, a planetarium, a terrarium with walls and a floor and a ceiling that has been so well hidden and it's so huge and so complex that even our best and brightest didn't figure it out until almost 1960. And when right. they did, they decided to keep it a secret. Right. And we have, everybody in the Flat Earth community has tried to disprove this. Everybody goes after and tries to attack the Flat Earth and say, again, I, it's something I've been fond of saying recently, which is, Every day I wake up and I try to kill Flat Earth, and every day I fail. And because of that, our, our numbers just keep growing and growing and growing, because nobody basically <clears throat> can prove the globe in a court of law anymore. Uh, what I'm also fond of telling people is, can I prove to you the Flat Earth right now? Nope. Cannot. Not with 100% accuracy. But I can... Sorry, there's a bug flying around me. Uh, <laughs> but however, so I'm, I'm not crazy. Uh, <laughs> It's like some spiders <laughs> it's everywhere. Right, right. No, uh, however, I can create so much reasonable doubt in the globe that there is nowhere left for you to turn than some sort of flat earth model. And if people come back and say, well, reasonable doubt isn't enough, I say, really? Because it's enough in court every day of every year. And that's basically it. Uh, we do experiments, we do activism. We talk to subject matter experts. We tear down the existing space programs. 
And everything that we look at, every single thing points back to the same conclusion, which is the world isn't what you think it is. And it is difficult for some people to get through because we are shown the globe. It is put in our classroom as a child. And we see that globe without even words for years. And by the time, you know, we even get through just regular school, it's reinforced in our head. So resistance is strong. And what I like to say is everybody that gets into this tries to shut it down. It's just a question. It's, it's, it varies from person to person when you decide to give up. It took me nine months. With you, who knows? Right. <laughs> All right. Um... So, Mark, you're very famous. You I right know about famous. Infamous, you are, maybe. <laughs> you're um, on Netflix. Yep. You have a lot of followers. I have a few. Um, yeah. What can you tell me about... So, <clears throat> you're talking about this flat earth society, yeah. uh, which was somewhere in 1950, 1960, in, started in the UK. We were reading. Right, right, right. And it's sort of like... It, it slowly went down until... Uh, at least Wikipedia calls it the internet era resurgence right. of flat earth. Right. Um, and even though this is, uh, well, I guess not your, your, your field and I'm framing you into a right. question, um, but what has been the impact of internet and the, the possibility of uniting a lot of people um, in this specific kind of topic um why do you think it has exploded in such a way it well a couple things one social media has changed the game so, so much uh and i've got personal experience to to this because i talked to members of the original or the flat earth society that's been around for a while and in fact when i first got into it in 2014 because it has not been that long this thing's really taken off i was desperate enough for information you know, that I paid my 20 bucks and joined the Flatter Society that was based out of, I think, England and Hong Kong. And they sent me a little card and a certificate <laughs> and stuff like that. And in fact, that particular group, the uh, one of the first members other than the president was Thomas Dolby, the uh, the singer from, uh, where is Thomas? Is Thomas Dolby American? I can't remember. Blinded me with science. I'm pretty sure he's American. It's hard to tell. Doesn't matter if he is or not. It's okay. Uh, and... Then, but the thing is, they didn't seem to do anything. They were apathetic at the very least. I don't know if they're actually controlled opposition, although I hinted at it in my clues, <laughs> uh, which probably didn't thrill them a whole bunch. But they contacted me like 18 months after I had done the clues and, you know, they were kind of pledging their support. And I tried not to be insulting. But I was like, where have you guys been? Well, we've been right, ju right, absolutely right. just tearing up social media. So... Uh, between YouTube and Facebook and all the, the big social media players, yes, Flat Earth has really, really taken off. But it also helps, and I'm a big believer in writing. I, I don't care about actors or special effects. If the writing's good, the rest of it takes care of itself. And that is, I between myself and other people in the Flat Earth community, we have now, the reason, big reason why it took off, I mean, the internet's been around for a while, is that we now have a way of explaining the Flat Earth that is easier to understand than the heliocentric right. model. That's easier to understand than the globe. Ex in fact, exponentially easier. Because the globe just, yeah, you can show people the globe and they're going, yeah, I know what it is. But it's like, try to explain how it got there. You're talking about geometry and trigonometry and calculus and quantum mechanics you, and stuff that we have no idea what's going on. Whereas we can hold up the flat earth model and say, this is what you get right here. It's simple, it's easy, it's small. Uh, so that's the big reason it took off. I mean, it wasn't just social media. Yes, it helps that you have 6 billion smartphones and high-speed internet. But look, we've had the internet for some time now, the better part of 20 years. You know, decent internet for 20 years. I know there was dial-up back in the day. But right. the information could have been out there. That's what's changed, is is the the how someone had to come along, and I'm going to take credit for this. I, I, I'm I'm being humble when I say this. Because I made the dummies guide for Flat Earth. I made Flat Earth 101. Right. Other people before me, sure, I didn't invent Flat Earth. Uh, other people had other stuff out there. You know, Eric and Matt and Jay Henning Caligia and Paul Michael Bales and those guys. But they assumed that the audience was more and more and ready to accept it. Whereas okay. I handheld them through it. I mean, I walked right. people through it like they were children. 
and right. that just comes because of my training. Your, your videos even have some sort of um, language of their own in, in, in the sense that they're um, like the way to experience them when you're not a flat earther. Like what I mean is you, you have a very clear understanding of who the video is directed to. Right. Um, well, and how it, to explain them things to them. Thank you. I, it's it's directed to the lowest common denominator. It is directed to somebody who has no... Because look, I, I've talked to these people. I, part of my training when I was um, doing my software stuff was going to blue-collar factories and explaining software to people that really don't use software. And so I had to develop this, this new sort of what you said, like a dialogue. And... In that process, I realized when I was making the clues, okay, the average person doesn't know physics, they don't know mathematics, they don't know anything about the heliocentric model, not really. I mean, they, most people can't even name all the planets. So right. we start there and we work our way backwards. And uh -huh. it seemed to resonate. Uh, you know, that and my narration style was, was pretty straightforward, you know, and I kind of lulled them. I wasn't us using ASMR or anything. But I right. kind of lulled them into submission. I mean, to where people were telling me that they would listen to the clues once and pay attention. And then they would listen to the clues while they went to sleep. Because, you know, they, they get that sort of nodding off thing. And right, it's right. like, yeah, that's probably not the best thing to do in the world. Uh, but, yeah, that, that's how it worked. Um, so we're now moving to the uh, second stage, let's call it. Mm -hmm. um, Mark, you're telling me that um, and what I admire of the, the movement is you're not trying to prove that the earth is flat you're just asking a lot of questions yeah um, and I think that's very healthy and I think that's very important we all uh, as, a, as a, the people who are doing the documentary right. um, why do you think it's powerful to ask oneself questions you know, there's funny, I, I heard a, a saying, and I've heard variations of this, but I like the Russian saying the best, and I just heard this actually, I think this morning, which is trust, but confirm. Uh, the American version of it is uh, trust everybody, but count your change. And, you know, because every once in a while you, you'll get cheated, you know, but, but yeah, there's a certain, there's a certain responsibility for science to stay within the lines to stay as factual as possible without making leaps of faith remember science isn't supposed to make leaps of faith right and at some point that like a lot of people they they took the liberties they realized that if you're wearing a white lab coat and you come from an institution and you're certified basically whatever you write down whatever you get your rubber stamp on people are going to buy it you know, right. it, and, and everything, again, which is why I talked about in the clues, like, look, you want to tell me what the boiling temperature of water is at sea level? Great, I can test that right now. But all of a sudden, you start telling me what the core of the Earth looks like, even though you've only drilled down 8 miles and the core is supposedly 4,000 miles down, you have no idea what's down there. And yet your artist renderings, I mean, I use that as the, as the class, classic example because science rarely will just put up their hands and say, no idea. They okay. will, uh, in fact, really the globe model, when you, instead of that cross section with red and orange and yellow and white bands, you know, perfectly spaced, it just yeah. should be a giant question mark. But, but science won't do that. That's not what they're there for. It's like, no, we'll give you answers. And what, what happens is they say, okay, we think it's this. Well, we really think it's this. And then they just stop saying that and they put out right. the diagram and then people think, well, it's this. They, and yes, you're right. Asking questions is so, so important because, especially nowadays, because we have developed a society that really embraces the, I don't want to learn, I want to be entertained. And because of that, the, we have so many options for entertainment now that people are basically feeding themselves a, a steady diet of junk food and media, which is you know, hey, instant gratification, great. You know, that's what we're all about. But it is so dangerous because at that point you are leaving education to, or you're leaving science to the scientists. And you're basically saying, I trust you no matter what. Well, you give them that much leeway, they are going to take you to places where you don't necessarily want to go and invent things that just for the sake of inventing them and come up with any th sort of theory and create their own dogma that can stomp out other things. 
I mean, let, let's not get into much, I don't know, into carbon dating uh, or evolution or the Big Bang Theory or right. one of my favorites, dark matter. I mean, we've got a lot of physicists out there that are absolutely dedicated to dark matter as the solution. And it's absolutely theoretical and unprovable. And they're using right. this as the, the fill. They're filling in the big gaps in space, even though we can't go there. So, yeah, super important to ask questions. I, I've said that in many of my videos. It's like, look, in fact, I say this in just about every interview, which is don't take my word for it. Right? In fact, don't, do not, it's like, let's do not think that the clues are some sort of gospel. And which, and that right. was, and that worked because I'll, I'll give you a quick example. In the clues, in no way in the clues did I say run to the beach with a high HD camera and start shooting long distance photography. Never even hinted at it. And that was one of the right. first things that people started doing. They started coming up with their own experiments, their own tests, their own theories. Do and, you think, and seeing in your, in your, sorry, in your background, uh, this, uh, that probably w what stood out from all this was the uh, Google Flat Earth movement instead of this is what you should know about Flat Earth right. movement. Right. Um, you're actually, um, in a way, you're not inviting people to trust what you're telling them, right. but you're inviting people to look up things for themselves. Yes. Um, I, this I, is very I, remarkable. I wanted Sorry. to be wrong. I absolutely wanted to be wrong. I mean, if you watch the documentary, you knew this. It's like, look. I, I, I can't solve this, this problem. I can't solve this riddle anymore. I, that's why the internet though, hive mind is really, really intelligent. You guys can solve it. And that was the worst thing ever because not only did they not solve it, all of a sudden this, this movement started happening. This, this army started being created. It's like, yeah, we should question everything. And, and, and cause again, if you can get your head around flat earth, you are open to every single possibility there is. And you're going to revisit things you shot down in your past. So yeah, it is. is it, Do you think that's healthy? Hmm? And, and, and that's very healthy. Yeah. You can agree with that. I, I agree. I agree. It's like, look, you, you'll confirm. I, again, I like the Rus the Russian saying trust, but confirm don't. If you have any doubt in your head, and that's not to say that, like, look, you know, don't stick a penny in a light socket, right? Well, there's, <laughs> there's some lessons that have to be learned by doing. There, there, there's some lessons that you just cannot teach people. Um, and But if you have any doubt in your head, ask. If you don't understand it, I mean, I hate to use the, the childlike thing of, you know, why is the sky blue? But I majority of the people uh, living in this world, they have no idea. You know, it's just right. whatever their parents, whatever their parents told them. Churches do the same thing. You know, they, they make big leaps and, you know, just try to explain it away. But, but science shouldn't do that. Sci I mean, religion is religion and, you know, separation of church and state. Science should never make such a huge leap and say, this is absolutely the way it is. I, you, you probably heard me say it. The most arrogant thing I've ever heard outside of Kanye, uh, everything that Kanye ever says, <laughs> is uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson when he said science is true whether or not you believe in it it's like whoa uh, uh, some heavy stuff there man because you're, you're basically saying that science doesn't make mistakes and then I come back and say and, and they say oh no no science makes a mistake I go really which well, tell me when tell me when they've ever admitted to a mistake sorry anyway go ahead <laughs> okay 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 um <laughs> but let's go with I'm sorry. I'm just uh, between wrapping my head and everything and, and You're translating. Good. You're my good. Questions. Don't worry. Don't Thanks. worry. <laughs> um, so, but about what you were saying, you think a lot of people put that uh, trust stamp maybe too quickly in some sort of way. They, um, they oh, not not us. just quickly, instantly. Uh, it's it's almost like we we have a kind of a, a running joke in conspiracy. It's called auto hoax which is, you know, basically question everything that the mainstream media tells you, you know, unless it's a story about, well, I mean, almost anything. So the people, yeah, when they go through their daily lives, they, they believe pretty much anything that comes across their phone. If it comes from a, a trusted, certified news source, uh, especially in the United States, we have so many news agencies, uh, yeah, I know. They, they believe it. And you got to remember, science feeds those news sources. Uh, we've got something here called the Associated Press. If it comes over the Associated yeah, Press, yeah, the, the what? The AP? Yeah, the Associated. AP. Yeah, yeah. If it comes across the AP, it's it's certified news. It's absolutely right. legit. And, and it's hypocritical. I mean, come on. 
we we all know there's conspiracies happening every day in every aspect of our life. It, I mean, we're, conspiracy is is just a lie between three people. That's all it is. And take your pick: business, politics, sports, entertainment, journalism, even science. You could pick any of those, and I could talk an entire day on conspiracies right. that happen. Every once in a while, we'll let a few of those out, like right. um, business, like Enron. That was a big thing here. Enron happened. You know, a giant oil and gas company that defrauded so many right. people right. they had to rewrite the government tax laws. Uh, <laughs> sports. Oh, my God. Every single sport because it's such a competitive nature. Are you kidding? Professional right. athletes would cheat every day if they could right. because that's how competitive they are. I mean, Lance Armstrong yeah. happened, right? <laughs> And he yes. he lied for seven years. Seven years. Seven years he lied to the cameras every freaking race. Like, nope, not doping. Yeah, he nope. had all those Nike commercials about uh, criticizing all the people who told him he was on uh, drugs and everything, and he yeah. actually was. And then finally, uh, when he when he when he got caught, uh, he said, "Oh yeah, I was lying the entire time." You know, he had to fess <laughs> up. It's like, really, you were lying for seven years. You know, and and he they stripped him of everything, a single thing, and uh, and something has changed recently. And I don't want to get into necessarily other conspiracies. Uh, I won't name them. Unless you, if, if you want to talk about some, I I'm more than happy to talk about it, but I won't can. offer them. And that is lawyer rules apply, and the lawyers, I mean lawyers, do rule the world in in some capacity, which is unless they have you, they don't have you. And basically, it right. says the lawyers will say, deny, 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 deny until they have you absolutely against the wall. Then you admit it because there's a chance that they'll, they'll always say the same thing. You can get out of it. And it doesn't mm -hmm. matter whether it's a drunk driving case or a massive pharmaceutical company or an entire government. The lawyers right. say the same thing. Why admit it if you don't have to? So. I, in fact, I could even use that uh, that that rule. Lawyers probably screamed during the last game uh, Game of Thrones episode when <laughs> Jon Snow kills Danny, right? And there's no witnesses around him, none, no witnesses. And flash forward three weeks, they apparently confessed to everything, even though there's right. no body, there's no dragon. She just right. flies off with him, right? <laughs> Nobody knows what happened in that room. And right. he, it's like, all he had to do was say, I have no idea. That's all he had to say. No freaking clue what happened. That's all he had to say. Nope. I killed her. Dragon ran off. I meant to kill her. And it, <laughs> we, we never even saw the confession. Sorry. Go ahead. Right. A lawyer, a lawyer would have killed him. Lawyer would have been like, are you, right. lawyer would have right. pulled right. him yeah. off. It's like, okay, here's how it went down. And that's it. I mean, the, Jon Snow should have called a lawyer right then and there. There you go. Mark, if, um. So what would happen if, if that actually happened? Like if someone from NASA came around and said, look, uh, a lawyer told us deny, 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 deny. And now all of this movement has um, rise in, and it's my time to say. Yeah, well, actually unfortunately, it's never going to get that far because America, you're welcome. We, we invent things that should never be invented. And one of them is called too big to fail. Uh, it's a concept that if corporation is too big and too integrated with other corporations, you cannot destroy right. them because it could potentially cascade and, and wipe out the, the country. Right. Uh, NASA is one of those players. Here's why. NASA is just a collection of parts. I mean, yes, NASA is a military organization. And I don't know if you listened to my argument with the Australian television thing today. Uh, or was it yesterday, last night, where, where they had a scientist on there and he said the NASA, no, well, since there's civilians working in NASA, it's not a military organization. It's like uh, every branch of the military has civilian subcontractors. Yeah. That's a load of BS. Um, but NASA is a collection of parts. So, right. and by that, I mean, we have massive military contractors that make parts for NASA. Little companies like oh Boeing, General Dynamics, Lockheed yeah, Martin. Of course, of course. Lockheed Martin. Yeah, yeah, they're they're huge, huge companies. And if NASA all of a sudden admitted, like Lance Armstrong, that something was wrong, the class action lawsuit, which would be immediate and huge, would potentially cause so much damage to these kind these companies that the stock markets would would be in disarray. It would it would not be fun. So whatever's going to happen soon they're go whatever whatever next move is happening on the other side of the chessboard they ha will have to cover their ass and protect nasa they'll they'll have to let nasa off the hook because nasa yeah i mean their budget is i think 54 million dollars a day 
which comes out to roughly $20 billion a year. That's a lot of money. Uh, but you're going to have to let them off the hook somehow. I don't, I don't know how exactly. I mean, I could probably write it, you know, the wording for it. But I, I you know, it's dealer's choice how they're going to do it. So, no, you can't. You can't it'll never get that far, you, which is right. why out of all the subject matter experts that I have talked to that I'm building into the, the new book I'm writing, um, they, uh, none of them are from aerospace. Yeah, we got pilots okay. and engineers and, and uh, vacuum seal experts and all, all branches of the military, but we do not have NASA uh, right. for an ob obvious reason, which is, you know, it, you can't. It, because once it's, it's, it becomes too real at that point. If all of a sudden right. NASA did this, it, people would be like, sh there'd be shock and awe. People are like, oh my God. But then the lawyers would, all of a sudden you're going to have corporate lawyers get in. It's like, well, wait a minute. <laughs> we, right. We're paying a lot of money to do things, and you guys aren't doing. Then the government would lose their minds. I mean, right. tw fifty-four million dollars a day eh, that buys a lot of stuff. So, anyway, there you go. So, short answer: not going to happen. <laughs> um. So, more personal here. Um, yeah. Your life has kind of turned around um, mm. around this topic. Yeah. Um, you, well, I want to like, kind of believe you did not expect that, expected that. My life uh, was so quiet and boring and I did in 2014, I had absolutely stayed out of history's way. It was difficult to find me in 2014, <laughs> really <laughs> difficult. I, I had ex-girlfriends that when I finally did bump to, it was like, you're not in the internet. And I go, no, I am not on the internet <laughs> at all. I didn't, uh, I still don't. I mean, I didn't have a Facebook. I didn't have anything in social media. I had a YouTube channel with my name with right. no, no videos on it. And right. other than maybe a basketball tournament record from my high school days from the eighties, from a newspaper sure. clipping from a long time ago, there was almost nothing you could find on it. Right, right, right. Then this happened. And... <laughs> everything happened really really fast and i didn't have to do anything that was the weird part i mean I, I joke that if i ever write an autobiography it'll be called unsolicited because i literally <laughs> had to do nothing people called right. you know television stations radio stations podcasts producers publishers mm -hmm. just general people <laughs> And right. I mean, they all, they all contacted me and said, Hey, Netflix. Is, yeah. Oh, well, <laughs> I didn't even have to, I, that is the funny thing. I had, I had nothing to do with the Netflix deal. Right, right, right. Yeah. I mean, it was the, like, here, here, perfect example. Again, flat for whatever reason, this is a thing. And I don't know if anything can stop it now because we're getting almost no resistance from media. Uh, right. for example, the, you know, <clears throat> the the first the first documentary team that pulled the trigger uh which was the team uh, delta v productions out of los angeles i mean they were the first ones everybody else was talking about it, talking about it and right. you hear producers and you know i'd always heard the rumors like oh you know producers are a dime a dozen nobody actually follows through and they actually right. came up and started filming within an hour after getting here uh -huh. and then we filmed for seven months and I learned enough about the film process that's like, okay, well, then you submit it to film festivals. Well, 95% of film festival movies are not accepted. You know, like like the Toronto Film Festival, there were 3,000 submissions. They only picked 100. We yes. got in. And then out of those 100, and this happened again and again and again with the film festivals, we always made the top 10 in like, you know, movies you must watch. So we did... I think in the initial run, 22 or 23 film festivals in seven countries. Wow. And, but even then the producers are saying, well, it's never going to sell. Right? We're never going to, it's never going to go anywhere. <laughs> and then immediately, uh, iTunes and Amazon and Google play and YouTube red, they all picked it up. And right. then right after they picked it up, Netflix picked it up. And then right. that's when it changed because apparently anyone under the age of 30 owns Netflix. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know why. Apparently that is their television. It is like, it's a required thing. Oh, do you have Netflix? Oh, do you have it Netflix? Is. I didn't have Netflix when it came out. Oh. And so all of a sudden, uh, oh, my, my, my email load doubled overnight, which was already pretty heavy. And I couldn't figure out why. And then I started reading the emails it's like, oh, I saw you on Netflix. I saw you on Netflix. 
Right. And Netflix wow. took a chance and they they put it in trending and it still kept yeah. trending. So it, it still is. The what? It, it still it's is. It's still trending. Yeah. Which makes no sense. I mean the holidays are it's freaking May. You know, it was put in in November and apparently as far as right. documentaries go, it's it's very very interesting. And I and I when it came, when it got to Netflix, I understood because I was in audiences. I was in theater audiences, which nobody gets to see because that's it was film right. festivals. Yeah. And they all did the same thing, which was for the first twenty minutes, they didn't think it was real. Mm-hmm. They they watched it and they're they're laughing. You're laughing at the jokes because oh, it's like a parody. Fiction, yeah. Right. It, it's not real. All these people are are pretending. And then at around twenty five minutes, thirty minutes, they're they're going after some of the montages and they realize how big is they're going wait a minute this is this is actually this is... happening on the internet they're, this is this is a corner of the internet they've never seen before and it's real right um right. A, a story i like to tell um is the editor of the movie showed it to another editor in hollywood without any context the guy knew nothing about flat earth and he, he goes watch this i'm not going to tell you anything about it just watch it and they were friends and he watches it and at the end he goes man he goes, what sort of budget did you have for this movie? And he goes, well, what, what are you talking about? He goes, he goes, all those actors, they played it so straight. Right. It was like it was real, right? And, and he goes, because it was real. And that's when the guy, his mind was blown. He goes, you mean that conference? That conference right. actually happened? He goes, yeah, man, I was there for the whole thing. Uh, wait, I don't even think Nick was there for it. That's the funny part. I don't think Nick was there. Uh, so I screwed up that story. But uh, but it, the point was, is that we heard, I saw this time and time and time again. And right. it became uh, as much as people would say that, that you know, a lot, a lot of Flat Earthers hated that movie. Hated. And I knew they would. I mean, because of the shots it took against us. But it became one of our, if not the biggest recruiting tool of the year. Because right. every audience I saw it with, which was mostly globalists, Everybody had questions at the end. Right. I mean, I mean, talk about the questions. I mean, they because after a hundred minutes of watching that, you're going, "Oh, I got, I got questions, right?" And I had, and I, I'm talking, I, I was, I, w- I was flown out to some of these things where I would, I would, I was the one answering most of the time was the director and producers. What could they answer? Because the first question they had right. was, "Are you guys flat earthers?" And as soon as they said no. They, uh, they, the, you know, the like audience is like, well, what are you, you going to answer for me? Anyway, sorry, I ramble. No, 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 that's good. Um, so last one, oh, I think it's the last one. Okay. <laughs> um, what, what could you tell, um, to someone who has a nine to five job, um, in the corner of the world of, a country with a failing economy who can just barely do anything else that other than wake up, go to work, watch Netflix and probably go to bed. Um, do you think the world has shaped some sort of way in which it's more convenient to not ask questions? It's not more convenient. It's easier to not ask questions. Um, but I, but I, let, let me let me answer that part first. But let me get back to how I think that flat Earth is relevant no matter where you live, no matter what you do. Don't don't let me don't let me forget that. Uh, the first part is is that it's easier to not ask questions, and people are always going to choose the easiest option uh there's a there's an uh an old book called art of war which a lot of people you know yes yes, yes. You know. uh and the only one of the few things i i mean there's some clever things in there if you're planning on starting a war actually it's actually a very very good book uh you know, as far as tactical goes without modern tactics it's like you know basic rules of engagement that's really all it is uh but there was an interesting line in it where he said that people are like water they always take the path of least resistance. And we, are, we have seen that time and time again. Uh, one quick example would be when people switched from talking on their cell phones all day to texting. Well, technically, which was weird because I watched it happen over a period of just a few years, which was uh, 
technically texting is harder to do it takes more effort it is than than actually picking or hitting speed dial on the phone however it is emotionally easier to text than it is to talk on the phone especially if you're talking with members of the opposite sex and so that is implied earlier if it's if it's easier for a guy or a girl I'm not judging that you know the text someone says hey would you like to go to the club with me lol smiley winky face blah 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 right and that's easier to do and they say well sorry i'm doing my hair whatever if that's if the rejection is easier if that whole moment is easier of course that's that's what happens and that then all of a sudden next thing you know nobody's talking on the phone anymore literally yeah I mean, more, you do have more time to plan i would have um had probably an easier time texting with you because i would have been able to translate those words i'm not confident with in english and, and oh sure and sure 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 i mean again it's it's easier to do that in that same line it has worked to our advantage like i said earlier flat earth is now easier and that is and i've tried to tell scientists this and they're just not getting it. i'm going look here's the problem and i hate to use this term but well you know i'm not going to use that term you can't if you don't can't find a simpler way to explain the solar system you are going to lose this you're going to lose it all because we have now we have so many visual aids and so many cool little diagrams and graphics that can be shared with people that people are going oh yeah i mean seriously all things being equal the flat earth model is now way way easy no do we have all the answers is it a 100 percent accurate model nope but it's more accurate right. than the globe so what do you what do you think they're going to go with um so that, so but don't you think that's some sort of way, like, of justifying a movement by saying, no, the people are ignorant, but they go in, in, in easier ways? No, 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 I, I'm not justifying the movement. I'm saying that if it's easier, why, and it makes sense. Why would it be easier? Right. Okay, yeah, I yeah, yeah. If, if it's logically possible and it's easy to understand, that's what they're going to go with. And trust me when I say this, we've been doing this for four years. If there were cracks in our armor that were really glaring, th this would not get traction. But people get it. And and the all the other part that really, really helps us is that, and you probably saw this in the movie, it's, it's kind of ethereal in nature. So, again, mm -hmm. everyone, I mean, we have arguments over, you know, we're still figuring out the, the details of, so it's kind of out of focus when you're looking at the flat earth model. You know, you'll talk to 10 people and are going, yeah, I think it's this. Yeah, I think of this. But what they all agree on at the end of the day is that globe over there. Yeah, that's nothing. There's no, and so everyone's like, everyone would rather go back to their fuzzy model that they're still working the, the kinks out of rather than go back to the globe, which is why I tell people, oh, I got to put this in the book. Uh, we have a 99% retention rate, meaning if we can get you away from the globe, there is a 99% chance you aren't going back because you can't go back. It is it is the quintessential red pill, blue pill, you know, the, from, from the Matrix. It's, it's true, though, which is you can't, even if you want to go back, you can't. You, you try and it's like, ugh, it just, it just doesn't, doesn't do anything for you. It doesn't inspire right. you anymore. Um, so let me go back to the original thing because you were, you were saying, you know, what does it make? I, you should probably have asked it like this, you know, for someone in a particular country that maybe not be doing much um, and they have a limited routine. Yeah. Put it in a way. What, uh, what, like, what, what make, I get this question from Americans quite often, which is, <laughs> why do I care about flat earth? My wife doesn't talk to me. My kids hate me. I have to go to my stupid job every day. Flat Earth doesn't make a lick of difference. Hang, hang on one second. I gotta, I'm gonna put you on mute for one sec. Okay. There's a, there's a cat behind me. Sorry about, <laughs> sorry about that. Okay. Right. So the point is, okay. What, what, what difference does it make? Right. The difference it makes is purpose. In that, if you are in some sort of flat domed enclosed structure if you are in some sort of building then then it is the opposite of being in this vast empty universe it means that this place was built for a reason and you have a reason for being in it now do we know all the details of exactly why you're here nope but it makes it much more intimate 
it means that the stars aren't millions of light years away, they are right on the ceiling with you like you're in a planetarium, which means they were built for you. It makes it much more intimate. Now, some people say, well, it makes it claustrophobic, and you're turning the universe into a one-room studio apartment. It's like, well, it's a pretty big studio apartment, and it's pretty nice. But but it gives you purpose. And, and, and let me kind of flesh it out with this. Because of that... There have been, there's been a huge uptick in the church because of this. In, in the United States, at least half of our members, and they didn't talk about this in documentary deliberately, at least half of our members are very religious. Um, yes. Most of them, you know, being in the United States, most of them are Christians. However, the other f main four religious houses, Judaism, um, Hinduism, Buddhism, and Islam, all have reacted favorably to this. Right, right. And because, look, if it is this shape, then it was built. And if it was built, then you only have two choices. One is an advanced civilization that's much older and bigger than ourselves or the divine. And take your pick right. at that point, because one man's advanced tech is another man's deity. And right. that's really what it comes down to. I mean, we're that's why it's this message. It's not your ordinary conspiracy. It's a, it's a message of hope. Uh, people all of a sudden, it's like, well, yeah, yeah, I'm getting up in the freaking morning, you know, and, and, and trying to figure this out. It's, it's, it's kind of a, it's part puzzle. It's part school. Um, it's part, uh, riddle and it's part religion in a way. I mean, no, we don't have robes or a Bible or chanting or anything like that, but you know, we do use some of those words, you know, like gospel and belief and leaps of faith and stuff like that. So it's fun in a way. I mean, the conventions, the conf I just got back from a conference in Canada. I mean, every conference I've gone to, every meetup is just the enthusiasm and the positive energy is off the charts. People are just so excited. I mean, partially because, you know, right. they get to talk with people, you know, without being, getting harassed by their family, friends, or coworkers. But right. it's, it's just an amazing thing. And I've still got, I've done three this year so far, and I've still got five more. In uh, wow. yeah, um, Stockholm, London, Amsterdam, California, and uh, Dallas, Texas. So, wow. yeah, I know. And, and those are just the conferences. I've got to finish the, the book. Uh, there's more documentaries do happening. I will see if they, you know, they, if they go anywhere, but that's, well, that's what I'm doing. No, we'll send them to you when we're done. Oh, yeah, no, I'm, so I'm excited for you guys. Uh, <laughs> what, what, so what, what school is this? Um, we are in the second city of Argentina, which is called Cordoba. Buenos Aires is the most um, famous Obviously, one. Obviously, yeah. And um, our school is called Blas Pascal, which is the inventor of the um, calculator, you call it? Really? Uh, yes. Um, and then we are doing this um, <laughs> degree. We don't have majors and minors. Ah. We're only like majors. Um, and we are in, it's called audiovisual communications. Nice. And this year we have a documentary, which we're doing our, well, you, our final project. You, you picked a good yeah, topic yeah. on it. Um, did you want me to, I don't know how many resources you have, but I could send you a bunch of media clips. Um, oh, oh, that, if it's not too much trouble. Oh, no, then no, yes, I, no, I don't No, I'd love to help. Um, do I have, I, should I send it to... Yes, it's called Ferreira Mati. Matias. Yes. Got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll I'll send it to him, and I'll send him I'll send him some still I'll send him all the still shots. I have a media packet that I usually put on flash drives, and I can right, send right. you through uh, WeTransfer. We have those. The what? The ones that come um, right down your email, uh, like three images. And then, no, no, I, I think I'm confused. I'm sorry. No, 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 you're, you're good. You're good. I'll, I'll send you, uh, I'll send you a packet of still images. I'll send you some video clips and I'll send you some examples. I'll put it together after, awesome. as soon as I'm done here and uh, I'll shoot them off to you. I think I can send up to two gigs for free. Uh, you have and two it'll, gigs re it'll really, interested. really help. And I'll send, I'll send, what I'll do is I'll send some American media stuff you know like ha okay. stuff you know american media i don't know how much you guys know about american media but we've had so much coverage oh, here. so yeah it'll no, be fun we do we do yes we do um mark last one yeah um 
It's actually not the last one. It's like That's all right. Just one sentence. Um, what we were describing some sort of um, human, so one type of person in, in a way to put it, uh, the type that says, look, this is irrelevant or this is, but not because it's irrelevant, but because I don't have time to ask myself questions. So in the more philosophical way, um, what could you tell that man? Like, if it, what yeah, could I, you say? I've heard that too. Yeah. People that don't have time and, and I've run into people like that where say, look, I'm, I'm busy enough. Uh, I'm barely hanging on to my life as it is. <laughs> You know, this is just going to be too disruptive. And to them, I just say, look, it won't matter. Uh, I believe in attrition. <laughs> so we'll just we'll just work around you. And eventually what will happen, and it was something I heard when I was down in Auckland at the conference. Uh, there was a guy, it's called the seventh man theory, which I really, really love, which is if you don't want to listen to something and you hear it from seven different random people, you're going to look into it. Meaning, you know, you walk around, it's like all of a sudden you're just like, oh yeah, I heard about this flat earth thing. You just wave it off, second person, third person. But apparently the psychological study is when you get to the seventh person, you basically, sure. you okay. cave in because you don't think, at that point, you don't think it's um, it's chance anymore. You think it's like, yeah, I really should look into this. And honestly, we, we all fall prey to it, usually with movies and music. And it's like, oh, have you heard this band? You heard this band? And then eventually right. it's like, all right, fine. I'll look at the freaking band. Uh, but it, it does run into that with flat earth. So anybody that says, oh yeah, I, I'm just too busy to look at it. Who cares? Won't matter because there, you will run into it with people. Uh, you're you're going to hear it enough times. It'll be completely random. And then finally be like, all right, uh, you know, everybody has some time. It's like, I, I will spend my five minutes at the end of my lunch and I will, I will, I will click on this. And, yeah, yeah, and of course, that's of course when they're doomed. Because the second they do, uh, depending on what you click on, it leads you down the rabbit hole. And Right. Yeah, yeah, of course. So. Do you think us humans are, um, especially the modern men, with so many info coming our way every day, yeah. do you think in some sort of way it makes us uh, proud that we sometimes, to a level that sometimes it makes us not accept info that's different than ours? Um, like the sort of conflict that makes it impossible for a man to even consider that the earth is, um, flat, not a globe. Yeah, not a globe. Yes. Um, Cause he goes like, I paid for school. Yeah. Um, I paid for this books. I paid for this. <coughs> it is, um, and he's like too proud to say, I heard you I over there, by the way. I heard that. I know you're there. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, he he's Matthias. Yeah. Oh, about. I know, I know. He he's not he's not feeling well. It's cool. He's not feeling well. No, he's not feeling well. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you you paid for your books, you paid for your school, and actually, yeah, the wor it gets worse the more education you have. So, in fact, I I've said several times, if you have a master's degree in any sort of physical science, <laughs> there's nothing I can do for you you've been you've been so indoctrinated that unless it comes from the television you know where someone says oh yeah by the way the world is flat and even then you're gonna have a tough tough time you're gonna be like what did i just do spent you know my life has been wasted up to this point um but when it comes to to what you were saying earlier ah crap i forgot what was the, the first part of this you uh, the pride of, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, that's what I was going to say. Okay, so there's, there's I've been coming up with new sayings over the last four years. And one of them, and, I, and again, I am probably haven't coined any of them, but I'm, I'm paraphrasing, which is <laughs> conformity builds empires. And that is, look, if you are any sort of government or civilization, the only way you can move forward as a civilization is if that the majority of the people fall in line. They do what they're supposed, you know, what you want them to do. A controlled economy, as it were. You know, you want, you know, you want people to go out. You want them to get married. You want to have two kids or more. You want them to, to, to go to a certain job for a certain, you know, want all the job sectors filled. And you want everything moving forward. You don't want that much independent thinking. Because if you do, if they do start to question everything, eh, they start to question things like, oh, I don't know, infrastructure and government policy. 
and you know you don't it's kind of like the the jokes at the universities you or, or like schools where you want people showing up for town meetings you don't want that many people showing up at town meetings you only want a certain certain group so yes people people <laughs> like to conform they naturally conform they take the path that people I know it's, it sounds terrible, but people are inherently lazy. So you don't have most of the time you don't have to worry about it. It's like whatever I the minimum amount of effort I need to do to get through the day and be somewhat happy. That's what they choose, and uh, okay. that's it's that's just part of life. Uh, this seems to sort of change that in a way. But I've seen people like to get into flat Earth that you know lose their enthusiasm, but it's still always in the back of their head. You know, it's it's like right. it's kind of like uh, what's the old saying? Uh, Once a smoker, always a smoker. You know, you, yeah, yeah. that's that's kind of the way with flat Earth. You know, you you can't right. you can't throw it away. So anyway, there you go. Does that Do help? Think, Does that sort of answer uh, that part? Of course, of course, yes, yes, yes. Uh, they ones this one specifically did a lot. Um, do you think the size? Because you're saying NASA. You said earlier right. NASA won't get to a point of admitting or they uh, can't. Yeah. But do you think that you also talked about religion? Religion, um, if you're uh, if you if you're a non-believer, you still respect it because it is so big and there's so many people and there's so much power in it. Say you're not a Catholic, yeah. But there's the Pope. There's millions and millions of dollars in it. Yeah. There's so, there there are also millions of people inside of it. You respect its existence. Do you think that is one thing to highlight from this whole movement that a lot of people respect uh, flat Earth and um, and the yeah. whole movement? Yeah, yeah. It's we've gotten to the size now. I mean, initially in 2015, they were just kind of waving us off. And it's like flat Earth, whatever. I mean, and I remember being happy to even see a, a tiny news article about it were mentioned, and then the next thing you know, within less than two years there was so much media coverage on us that we were actually getting angry or irritated if people weren't covering us you know i uh, and like it's like uh, like like when newsweek came after jaronism and i remember thinking to myself uh and, Jer and like jaron was angry the way they wrote the article right and right, i was right, right. i was jealous of jaron for getting the article written about him and i was trying to tell him going you know being attacked by newsweek isn't the worst thing in the world you know, considering <laughs> considering what we're doing, um, so uh, yeah, we we've gotten to the point now where people are, yeah, they're still making fun of us and they're still attacking us, but not as many as they used to be. I mean, we've had some wonderful pieces written about us. Now, no official network is ever going to endorse us because right. that's just crazy talk. But at the same time, they they will play it neutral. What they're doing now is they're trying to see if it's hate to say this, but it is America. They're trying to see if it's profitable. Meaning, if they introduce it as a topic, now we can watch social media in real time. And you can say, okay, looking at social media, are they, are how, how on board are the people? And you work the numbers and you say, can we turn this into something that we can promote? Which is why the documentary was made and the, which is why the documentary did so well. And now there's other people rushing in to do documentaries and there's people talking about television shows. It is only a matter of time. I know full well there's going to be a television show that will be on this very, very soon. And it is because it, it's not because they believe in flat earth. It's because they look at the numbers. So like you said, right, you know, right. the Catholic Church has a lot of money. You know, it doesn't it doesn't matter if you respect the five religious houses or if you believe in any of the five religious houses. Just know that each of them have about a billion people. And, you know, a heck of a lot of resources behind them, some more than others, you know, and there and some entire countries are based off of it. So, yeah, that's what we're running into now, whereas Flat Earth is absolutely talked about. It's not like you, you people will walk up to you and they, they don't they're not just waving you off anymore. Now they want to talk about it. So the question is, right, right. do we get to that tipping point where it's cooler to talk about Flat Earth than to not talk about it? You know, but, right. and since we skew younger, you know, the, the 12 to 17 and the 18 to 24 year olds, that's where it's headed. Because if, I mean, it'll be just like the iPhone at that point, which is if you're in the schoolyard, it's like, dude, you don't know about flat earth, Pfft, dork. You know, if it gets to that point, right, oh yeah, right, then, right. Then, then it's in, we, we've got it. 
All right. Um, I think that's it for us. Uh, All right. Do we? I think we're good. All right. I, if, you, if you have any follow-up questions, uh -huh. let me know. I will send you, sure. I will start putting together right now, and I'll shoot it off in the next 30 minutes. I'll put together. Don't worry, don't worry about it. No, no, no. I mean, I'll We're get to you. It'll be in, it'll be in Mateus's. Um, look for, it'll be a link. It might, if it shows up in your spam folder, make sure you grab it. It's a link from WeTransfer. And I'll see if I can use like the whole two gigs and send you as much stuff as I can, because, you know, I like promoting okay. stuff like this. <laughs> uh, and and best of luck. But again, if you have any follow up questions, or if there's anyone else you want to talk to, uh, okay. you know, like Patricia or Bob or Jaron or anyone you saw in the documentary, absolutely, I'm I'm pretty much yeah, wired in. So, so. well, um, we actually did uh, for the documentaries to have you that we got selected to have you and a, um, a local thought editor here in Cordoba, so that we could do like a more physical interview and uh, oh, okay or. or Oh, Real did you, you know, there is a guy down in kind of your neck of the woods, um, uh, Iru. Yes, Iru Landucci. Yeah, yeah, he's kind of down uh -huh. near where you kind of. So, it's funny, so Matias here, is the, our producer, Hello. and he, we could not get Iru. Uh, he have like super, um, <laughs> like manager of his very own facebook and he was very hard to get and matthias here came, came he came in and he was like i could not get that man uh and we we're like oh come on how hard can you and he was like but mark sergeant replied to me <laughs> and we were like, nice well see it's so funny because it was like we could not get someone from argentina but like we got mark Sargent, and we were all like how could that happen well again everything for a reason and uh i'm yeah. gonna keep doing i'm gonna keep doing as long as i can my schedule has been getting weirder and weirder and honestly if this would have happened in the fall i probably couldn't have done it but uh oh, okay. no worries are you kidding Thanks i so i much. love ever ever since the documentary i'll tell you a quick story and then i'll let you go uh, no. there was a part in the documentary where that 12 year old kid walked up to the microphone and was asking me questions right. and the director decided to leave it in there as a warning to parents saying that the kids oh, okay. shouldn't talk to them, but it had the exact opposite effect because, you know, because if kids are, you know, I'm, I'm pretty affable. I, I don't yell at people. So if and all of a sudden I had all these kids, everything from universities on down to junior high, like seventh and eighth grade. Just contacting me, calling me. It's like, hey, you want to talk about Flat Earth? Hey, it's like, yeah, sure, let's do it. So, yeah, if, if anyone, seriously, under a certain age, you know, if they're university or younger, I'm absolutely going out of my way to talk to them. Awesome. So. That was very, very, very good for yeah, us. Yeah, awesome. Incredible. All right, well. Hang on, I'll, I'm going to take a selfie with you. Oh, sure. Virtual selfie. Sure, sure, sure. <clears throat> Ready? Yep. <laughs> How's that? Awesome. All right. I, I'll be famous now. I, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. All right, uh, man. But check, seriously, so, check, so very much. check your email before you go to bed because I think it's uh, 10 o'clock where you are. 10 o'clock. Yeah. Uh, no, but we'll be around editing and stuff. Right. So. I, I will fire, yeah, we'll fire off some stuff if you need anything else, if you can think of anything. If, again, or if you want somebody. If something, somebody, it's like... We will um, actually go through this and uh, the rest of my... Um, classmate will analyze if i didn't screw up with any questions okay. or if i forgot anything right. and if i did not which i hope is the case uh then we won't have to bother you again cool but if i did then probably uh, i'll reach out to you all right thanks guys all right thank you so so much all right talk to you later bye bye, -bye.